Hi lovely viewers, it's me again your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Good morning. I as usual i've been monitoring the news items uh, coming out of uh, zambia and uh, i see a number of reactions uh, towards uh, president uh, edgar chagwalungu's uh, uh, last national address i see a number of people uh, reacting in different ways you see, there is this tendency by losers. You know what losers do? When you raise an argument and they can't respond to you substantively, they resort to attacking your personality. Instead of reacting to the issues that you have raised, they will go and attack your personality so that uh, somehow they can divert their attention from the issues that you have raised and you know cast aspersion on your character and this is this is very common among the UPND if you look at UPND UPND they really don't have substance UPND's uh, uh, manifesto is a personal attack on different people they did this when they were in opposition they they attacked, uh, you know, Edgar Lungu and his government basically on malice. Basically on malice. They never really dwelt on the issues that were currently happening in the country because they really didn't have the substance. They didn't have the argument. And they are doing this even when they are in when they are in the ruling party, when they are in government. When you raise issues against the UPND, instead of responding to those issues that you are talking about, they will attack your personality. We talk about the high cost of living, we talk about the high cost of fuel, we talk about uh, the high cost of electricity, let alone the load shedding that is there, we talk about lack of uh, opportunities, we talk about tribalism, we talk about corruption, all these issues, they don't respond to them. Especially for a person like me, the moment you talk about that, they will bring in my wife, they will bring in this and that, they never address the issues. And this is the same thing that I'm seeing on Edgar Chagwalungu. If you look at Edgar Chagwalungu's um, uh, deliberation or address, he was very substantive. He was very substantive. He looked at substance. He didn't throw in any malice in there. He spoke about issues and those issues are well outlined such that if this government had an argument or they had any ounce to stand on or to argue, they would have been addressing those issues. Let's start with the President Haka Indeichilema himself. Instead of responding to what President Edgar Lungu spoke about, to say, look, you promised people that you're going to reduce the commodity prices. You told people that I had messed up the economy, but look where we are. Have you reduced the uh, prices of commodities as you promised? If you can't reduce them from where they uh, from where they were, can you at least bring them back to where they where I left them? But instead of responding to that, he goes to say, "I'm not going to respond to uh, <laughs> failures, eh? to political failures. I've got a job to do." I mean, respond to what he, uh, 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 President Ed Galungu is saying. Respond to that. Respond to that. It's not, no, I've got no time eh, to whatever to engage these people. No! You have the responsibility. It's not, it's not even your choice. You have an obligation to respond to those issues. You have an obligation to respond to those issues. And you know, some people who are so myopic, who are so naive, they will be clapping to that. That Edgar Haka in the HLM has responded. He has uh, uh, put uh, Edgar Lungu in his place. No, he hasn't. Respond to those issues. Yes. Yes. You won the last election. Yes, Edgar Lungu lost that election. But today he's asking you, can you deliver what you promised the people? 
That is what he's asking you. And I even find it odd even to some people. When Edgar Lungu speak about something, you go, no, but even him he did this. But him he is not there, hello? He's not there. And maybe that is the reason that he's not there. Because he did those things that you're accusing him. But by the fact that he's now out, it doesn't mean that he cannot respond or he cannot talk about national issues. Even if he failed in something, it doesn't mean that he cannot talk about it now. Just like many of us who have been in marriage and failed, it doesn't mean that when you see a young couple is uh, you know, struggling in marriage, it doesn't mean that you can't say anything. If anything, you might stand a better chance of advising the young couple because you have got experience. If anything, Edgar Lungu might stand a better chance of advising because he had been there. And he, has, he, he felt and he has felt the effect of you know not doing those things that people expected him to do. So this argument of saying no, hey, he, he shouldn't talk, hey, he, he, whatever. No, he should. He should. He has got the right to talk. It is really uh, a, 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 a ludicrous, eh? L yeah, whatever. It is actually. <laughs> I'm trying to choose a better word to use. Eh? It is preposterous. <laughs> It is preposterous to argue, to say Ed Galungu did this, he cannot be talking about this. No, I think that is, the, that is being, a, you know, narrow-minded. He has to speak. And then I've seen also a guy in Congo, but no, Ed Galungu is being uh, driven by the devil. How? What has Ed Galungu done for somebody to say he's being driven by the devil? I mean, the man saved this country and we can all attest to what he did. And now you people who promise that you can do better, you are in government and you are failing. And this is why some of us have gone to Ed Galungu and said, Baba, can you please come back? It is us asking Ed Galungu, come back. And Ed Galungu has, okay, considered our, our plea. So what is that? What is devilish about it? What is devilish about it? Because by UPND, they, are, they make this thing like Ed Galungu is doing something like it's a crime. I don't know what he's doing. When they talk about it, he's come back. There is nothing wrong that Ed Galungu is doing. If anything, you are the people who are doing everything wrong, which is making Ed Galungu to come back. So, I really find it odd and I just thought I should say something uh, as I wait uh, uh, on the proceedings that are, happening, that are going to happen in court. In my view, I really think that those three judges must recuse themselves. Yeah, I'll be very surprised if they insist that they should stay on that bench. But for now, in the com gym, I'm trying to keep myself uh, fit because, you know, uh, I need to live long to see by UPND go down and uh, Ed Galungu taking over and maybe who knows Kuntan Shkulia after Walungu because if we take our time we want to learn that's why we want Ed Galungu to go in we can be part of government and learn the ropes of being in government so that we don't mess up but in the each they never had a chance of being in government so that's why you know I think he's messing around you need experience you need experience and this is why even at this point in time we are saying let Ed Galungu go in because now we to experience we cannot put in somebody who are going to try and error we don't need that anyway let me continue Kajim thank you all right that's all for you today lovely viewers if you did enjoy the video please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section section below i'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers once again i go by the name of mutatim pondum i love you peace i gotta go